Once again, we thank you. We ask that in this service you speak to everyone in a very specific manner. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please say hello to someone on your right and your left and welcome them to church. Welcome them to church. Welcome them to church. Where's Chuma? When I have it, let me know. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just a couple of announcements before we get into the service. It's not, yeah. So, um, from, next, from end of this month, end of this month into next month, we'll be having foundation course. What's the foundation course? So, all of us believe in Christ, but a lot of people have questions about Christianity and need to build their faith. So, we have a course that our whole church is taking. I'll be teaching about it in the midweek service. So, for six midweek services, I'll be teaching about the foundations of Christianity. It's, so it's a foundation course for the whole church so that you can know what we believe and what we don't believe. So it's a foundation course. I need you to know so that we all can register for it. We all can register for it. So this announcement by during the week, we'll begin to say that. Then secondly, our fasting and prayer continues. Amen. Amen. Our fasting and prayer continues. So many things, so many things, um, so many things we're doing. Number one, we have NLP devotionals, which is, it takes place at 6 a.m. It's just 15 minutes. It's a diff, it's different from NLP. It's on Zoom, where you can spend time with believers and do the word of, and share the word of God. And we don't have it at 6 a.m. alone. It's 6 a.m. in every country. So if you're in the U.S., it's 6 a.m. the U.S. time. If you're in Nigeria, it's 6 a.m. Nigerian time. So it goes on like that. So you're not just praying. You have the opportunity to study the word of God and just look into the word of God that way. So that's NLP devotionals and 6.30 NLP starts. Praise the Lord. Last week, we spent a lot of time praying against difficulty. It was really, really powerful. I had a huge, we have several testimonies just declaring the power of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So this Wednesday to, so normally when we fast, in between the fast, Wednesday to Friday, which is 13 to 15, we normally have a special time of building our faith, praying. We call it awakening. It's one of the most powerful programs our church has always organizes. Awakening. I'm saying it because uh, if you miss it, just know you didn't participate in the fasting. I'm telling you, it's always life-changing. It's always life-changing. Let me just warn you, we don't normally advertise it because it's so deep. We don't, we don't normally advertise it. We don't stream it. We don't stream it. And the reason, why don't you stream it? The reason is simple. The power of God is always so present that sometimes things that happen in the meeting, we don't want to explain to people on social media why this happened, why that happened. So it's for we, we, praise the Lord. It's for we, we, praise the Lord. So it's Wednesday, first day, Friday. Come with deep expectation, knowing that God will meet you at the point of your need. I mean, just look at last week. Last week we had our women and men's prayer meeting. When we finished the women's prayer meeting, we thought that was the best. Then the men's prayer meeting the next day just took it to what? Another level. It took it to another level. It was really phenomenal. It was, it's something that we cannot explain to you if you missed it. Glory to God. Then um, throughout the time we're fasting, I don't know if you saw it. I know we didn't announce it, but every Friday throughout the time we're fasting, we've done one. We have two more. We're having spontaneous night of worship. Spontaneous night of worship. So we did it. It was really good. It was really good. I was looking at it. I was... Even I, I was surprised about all of the traction that people that joined online. So this Friday at 11 p.m., all of you that are in other countries, it may be easier for you to be evening. So we want to do that. And um, <clears throat> if you don't follow on social media, which I think you should, I think you should follow, especially on YouTube, where you can watch the videos. You can click the subscribe button. Anytime there's a new material, it can pop up to you and say there's a, subscri there's a new material for you. Hallelujah. And the last announcement is this. Water baptism takes place on the 23rd of September. Water baptism and Holy Ghost baptism takes place on the 23rd of September. The last announcement is the two Sundays from now, we're going to have a special miracle service. Just, we'll have finished fasting on the 21st, but on the 24th, is it 23rd? 24th, we're going to, God just really asked me that a lot of people are praying for a lot of things, that we should join our faith together and we pray with them. So what we're going to do is this. What we're going to do is this. We're going to, um, on the Saturday before, we're going to have a faith clinic. And maybe Friday or Saturday, we'll have a faith clinic. Then on Sunday, 
those that attend the free clinic, I will spend a lot of time just laying hands on them. So if you have people that are believing for a child, people that are sick, people that have cancer, people that have delays and all those kind of things, if we invite them together, because people are always asking me that, will you pray for me personally? So this is the, that prayer for you personally. This is that prayer for you personally. So um, we hope that we can contain everyone, but it's just going to be a service. We'll prioritize all those that attend the faith classes that will minister to them. It's going to be Sunday evening, just for you to know. No, is it Sunday evening or Friday evening? It's Sunday evening. Amen. It's Sunday evening. Praise the Lord. So please go ahead and take note of it, and it will be a blessing to everyone. All right. Are we ready for the word of God today? Yes, yeah, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's really good to be here. It's really good to be here. Let's turn our Bibles and it's wonderful. I'm so excited, so excited about this teaching. Exodus chapter 4 in verse 13. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. No, that, that amen doesn't seem believing. Hallelujah. Amen. I said hallelujah. Amen. amen. Glory to God. Exodus chapter 4 in verse 13. Exodus chapter 4 verse 13. Concerning the miracle service, it's good for you to invite those you are praying for. I know the love you are praying for other people, but it's good for you to invite them. The reason why is that no matter the amount of faith or prayer you have, it can be limited by the person you are praying for. Is that not true? Yes. Exactly. So it's good for you to make sure the people you are praying for can join the prayers, can join all of those things. It's good for you to remember that. So Exodus chapter 4, sorry, Exodus chapter 4, verse 13. And this morning I'm teaching about accessing divine, uh, is it accessing? It's, there's a stronger word. And I want them to know this so they can put it on social media. Provoking divine intervention through prayer and fasting. Provoking divine intervention through prayer and fasting. Look at him and say provoking. Look at him and say, it's time to provoke. Say, can I provoke you this morning? Praise God. Hallelujah. Have you been provoked before? Have you been provoked before? Pro provoking is not like, um, sorry. No, 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 no. When they provoke you, and if you are provoked, there's a reaction. So this morning, there needs to be a reaction. Uh, the only someone in the choir heard me. There needs to be a reaction. Provoking divine intervention by prayer and fasting. What is intervention? Intervention is interference. Intervention is interference of one state in the affair of another. That's what an intervention is. You're interfering. So for example, there could be someone that, you know, as I'm dressed right now, someone can just come and do this. I'm like, why are you interfering with my dressing? When there is intervention interference, someone else outside that situation steps in and begins to do something. That's intervention. That's interference. What intervention? Medically, in the medical world, you will hear that the medical intervention did well. Intervention refers to when you take action to stop, to prevent or to improve something. Extremely when it comes to health. Why do we need intervention? Why do we need intervention? So someone says, well, I don't know if I need intervention. Maybe by the time I finish teaching this, you'll discover if you need intervention. Why do you need intervention? Number one, we need intervention when all natural methods are failed. Inter divine intervention is needed when all natural methods are failed. The woman with the issue of blood, the Bible says she has spent her own money. She was rich. She became poor because she used all her finances to gain back her health. She did not only lose her health, she lost her finances in return. My God. Intervention is when all natural methods all, you need intervention when all natural methods, when all natural effort fails. You have done the IVF, it doesn't work. You have done the this, it doesn't work. When all else fails, you need intervention. When do you need intervention? 
Intervention is needed when there's no one to help or support. You look to the right, the kind of help you need. You know, I was telling someone, I said, when you don't know how to look up to God, men can help you. But as you grow in life, the kind of money you need, ah, very few men can help you. It's only God that can help you. And when you need 100,000, 200,000, 1 million, you 2 million, 5 million, 10 million, a lot of people can borrow you that. But when you're looking for 7.5 million dollars, you need intervention. When there's no one to support, the people to support are not able. Sometimes people want to support you, but they don't have the resources to support you. That's when you need intervention. Am I talking to someone today? You've submitted the file. You've submitted the proposal. But you need someone to speak to someone. But yet you have nobody. That's when you need intervention. The third case when you need intervention. When you have pressing and <laughs> when you have pressing timelines. Oh Lord. If this does not happen tomorrow, I'm done. When the timeline, when you have pressing, some of you have pressing timeline to raise money for something. You have pressing timeline for marriage. You have pressing timeline for a project. They told Jesus is dead. Jesus said, I am time itself. I need time. I am the resurrection and the life. He said, I did not only make time, I restore time. You need to go back and watch next level prayer. I'm not sure the day we prayed it. Maybe it was Friday. There was a very powerful prayer. That all the good you have missed, the grace of God will restore it back. Because we are humans, we're, we're going to miss opportunity. Some of you have missed good marriages. Some of you have missed good opportunity. You have missed good finances. And the prayer is this, the God that restores all the good you have missed, that the grace of God will restore it back. My God. When there's pressing timeline, pressing timeline, that's when you need this adventure. That's pressing. If it doesn't happen now, it's done. When you need intervention, when you have put yourself in a mess, oh yeah, when by your own hand, with your own efforts, not that you were intoxicated, you put yourself in a mess. A mess that only the mercy of God can bring you out of it. There was a case of someone that got into trouble abroad and he was, um, he was home arrest. They would just put, you know what they do in the US, they will put this thing on your leg. I don't know what they call it. What do they call it? Ankle monitor. So that you can go within the region. He came to NLP, Lord, I want to testify. The ankle monitor had been on his leg for two years. Within one week, one month, I think, of coming to NLP, that ankle monitor was removed. He himself knew he deserved ankle monitor. But yes, the mercy of God found him out. Some of you have destroyed the relationship you should have led to marriage. All the people you should have married, you wish them to do girlfriend and to twin stick. Now you are single at 40. You say, Lord, I know I'm the problem. Let the mercy of God find me. You know you should have not gotten that money. You took the bribe. You took it, not that anything. You know you took the bribe. Now you're on probation. They want to sack you. Intervention is that, Lord, I know I should be fired. But there is a place of mercy. Let the mercy of God find me out. You deserve the HIV, the way you have slept around. But Lord, 
I'm here. Let the mercy of God find me out. Many years ago, I was preaching in the public of Benin. As I was preaching, the Lord opened my eyes. I said, there's a lady that has HIV. It was a young congregation. The lady was a student. I said, you have HIV? I said, come on. She came out. As she was coming out, she was soaked in tears and crying. I didn't know if she was crying because of the word or because of embarrassment. I said, I wanted to pray for her. He said, I deserve it. He said, he said, my parents are responsible. I came to this place to school. I became responsible. I slept with all manners of people. He said, my mother owns a lab. I went home. I was feeling sick. They did the test, and I saw I was HIV positive. I said, well, the mercy of God has found you now. Hallelujah. And we prayed for her. I didn't hear from her for several months because HIV is not going to and pray and say, I'm healed. You have to go and check. And because of she, was, she didn't want to check with strangers, let's say, you know, she went to check when she returned back home. And the result came back negative. That's the case of intervention. We have a testimony from the London church. Pastor that you're here. The lady's fallopian tube was removed. How do you get pregnant without a fallopian tube? The first miracle, the fallopian tube was restored. The second miracle, when I saw her in the London church, I said, this is the baby they said I could not have. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. When did intervention? When men have harassed you and cheated you. When men have harassed you and cheated you. The Bible says in the book of Acts, he says, now behold thy threatenings. Uh, let me show you that quickly. Acts chapter 4. My God. Act chapter 4. That, that's why if you don't take prayer serious or you don't take fasting period, maybe you don't need intervention. But if any of these cases pertain to you, oh my God, then you need to engage in fasting and praying. Act chapter 4. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh wow. Oh. This was when the apostles were harassed. Verse 24. Or let's see for verse 23. They were arrested. He says, and being let go, they returned to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said unto them. They were threatened. And when they had heard them, they lifted up their voice unto God with another accord and said, Thou God, thou that hast made the heavens and the earth and the sea. I love the way they were calling him. And the sea and all that is in them, who by the mouth of thy servant David said, Why do the hidden rage? Why are they threatening us? And the people imagine vain things. And the kings of the earth stood up and ruled and rulers against were gathered together against the Lord and against the anointed. Verse 29. He said, Now, Lord, behold their threatenings. One lady had a child. According to her testimony, after a year or so, she went back home to show the grandparents the child. One of the grand aunties came coming out of the child. He said, Whose child is this? He said, It's my child. The woman said, Did you vomit it? He said, what do you mean, ma? He said, you should never be able to have a child by what we have done. He said, except you can vomit the child. But it doesn't matter the threatenings. It doesn't matter the wrong prophecy. He said, did you vomit? He said, did you vomit it? There's nothing beyond the power of our God. Hallelujah. The last case when you need an intervention is this. When the case at hand needs spiritual attention. When the case at hand is spiritually influenced. The reason why is that once the case is spiritually influenced, there's nothing any natural method can do. It's just like if you have a post-school problem and EFCC arrests you, no matter how clean you are, you cannot come out of it. Yes or no? The reason why is that 
the cause of your problem was not if you were righteous or you were not righteous. Was not if you stole or not. Because politi- see, if a problem is political, accounting, account solution cannot solve it. You would need political solution for what political problems. So, if your case is spiritual, if your case while you are married is spiritual, if you like, bath inside makeup. What do they call that thing when you cut your body off? What do they call it? When you add to your bone, when you, what's it called? What? BBL. Don't only BBL. BBJ. BBK. BB everything. If you like, BB to eternity, you can never find a husband. The reason why is that what has cost you to not be married is not natural. That's how you know you need intervention. Mark Esther chapter 4 now. Let's read Esther chapter 4. Oh, wow. And this is why you need to sit up as we see we're giving ourselves to fasting and prayer. Esther chapter 4. Verse 13. Are you there? Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther. He said, think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. Mordecai was saying this because he needed intervention. The date for which him and all the Jews would die had been established. They had put a date. By this day, Mordecai, all the Jews will be wiped out. He reached out to Esther. Esther said, I can't help you. He said, hey! Verse 14. He says, if thou altogether hold thy peace at this time, I love the confidence of Mordecai. He says, if you hold your peace at this time, what did he say? He said, then shall enlargement and deliverance arise. These are not that word for intervention. He said, if you refuse to let God use you, God will raise up intervention from another source. Can I declare over you? Everyone that the people that meant to help you have disappointed you. I speak as a prophet this morning. Enlargement intervention will arise from another source. Enlargement and intervention will arise from another source. In the name of the Lord Jesus. That amen needs help. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Glory to God. He said, take shall enlargement and deliverance arise to another to the Jews from another source. That's intervention. I, I love when God uses people you don't know to help you. The reason why is that he uses sister Toby to give me money now. I say, oh my, you know she loves me. She knows I'm a great person. But when she uses someone that hates me, then you will know that it's the hand of God. From this hour, strange help will come from strange people. Glory to God. What is intervention? <laughs> intervention is God rearranging things. There's no such thing as coincidence in life. There's no such thing as accidentals. All are divine arrangements of our Father. Very powerful. Look at Joshua. Joshua chapter 10, verse 12. I, I'm just going to be jumping. Joshua chapter 10, verse 12. Cases of intervention. They, they were fighting and time was going to go. When time, Joshua knew, if darkness comes, these guys will destroy us. If night meets us here, these guys will destroy us. You know what the Bible says? Then Joshua then spoke Joshua to the Lord in the day. When the Lord delivered the Amorite, children of Israel, and he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand still. Ah. And the sun stood still. Time froze for him. Uh -uh. I thought your God does not change. If he did it before, he will do it again. Everyone that has a timeline that is urgent, that is pressing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I said your breakthrough will come before that time. It's a son. Stand still. Listen, I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. 
I know that a lot of you are sophisticated and the kind of background you came from, I mean, when you come from a very strong family with a strong son name, before you breathe, private jet has come. Before you talk, they bought this. But some people have no such privileges. Joshua got to a place no man could help him. Time was against him. He said, son, stand still. And the son stood still. Because he had backing. I get back, you know. Oh. Sarah, Sarah, lift it for me, lift it for me. Yeah. Hey. My God. I get back in Amen. That's what I want you to live these 21 days with. That you know that my case is different. For me, for my children, I get back in. If they are choosing 10 proposals, mine will be there. We cannot call on his name and end up in shame. Ah, you cannot be spending all these days in church and your faith is so weak. You say the living God, not a dead God. Your God does wonders, not he did. He does in the present. He said, Jesus the same, yesterday, today, and forever. So your life must be full of the testimonies of his beauty. If you join next level prayer, you'll have heard me say the prayer over you. Let the beauty of the Lord be seen upon you. Oh, brakata. Let me tell you, some prayers I pray to next level, because it's a prayer meeting, I cannot explain it. Let me explain it to you. If you see Sister Toby, that's Pastor Daya's wife, and you see her in luxury, she's driving a Porsche, she's doing this, she's doing that. You say, wow, your husband is taking care of you. Why? The riches, the wealth of the husband is seen on the woman. We don't know the husband, but we can tell she's well taken care of. You may not see my God, but the beauty of my God is seen on my life. I pray for you today that the beauty of the Lord in everything you do will be seen upon you seen on your children seen on your walk seen on your marriage in the name of Jesus the beauty of the Lord <sighs> intervention it's a son stand still Look at Sarah. The Bible says it had passed time. Yet Sarah said in Genesis 21 verse 6, The Lord has made me laugh. He said, Them that hear laugh with me. Intervention. Doctor said it's not possible. But the Lord had made me laugh. Intervention. Luke chapter 5. Peter said, We have toyed all night and caught nothing. But you caught nothing until the intervention entered. When intervention entered, who caught nothing caught too much. Praise God. Fasting and prayer is an intervention trigger. Yeah. Fasting and prayer is an intervention trigger. Let's go back to the book of Esther. So, it's good to admire intervention, but there's something that triggers intervention. Esther chapter 4. we we'll stop at verse 15, right? 14? Yeah. Verse 14. Let's go. Esther chapter 4, verse 14. Wow. Okay, can, I, can I just move a little? Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 6 and 7. Let me just give you one scripture. You know, I, I, there are scriptures that when I just read them, I just bubble. It just provokes. You know, you, you need to, let me tell you something then. Give me a chair. Give me a chair. When you want to pray, let me tell you how to provoke. Many of you don't know how to provoke. 
This is a problem. You know, all of you that don't know how to pray passionately, this is a problem. You don't have something. So you sit down. Then you get your Bible. You get your Bible. Don't pray. You will not be provoked that way. You sit down. You look for some scriptures. Like this one. Second Chronicles 20 verse 6 and 7. You look for it. You just want to provoke. You don't, you know, you, you, you already have something that is troubling you. Don't, the problem is this. People pray from a place of fear. Don't do that. They pray from a place of worry. Don't do that. Philippians 4, 6 says that we should not pray from a place of worry. I'm going to come to that. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 20, verse 6. Go back. Put it there. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You want to provoke, right? Okay. Yeah. 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 20, verse 6. Put it up, put it up, put it up for me. <laughs> and they said, O oh Lord God of our Father, are thou not the God in heaven? And rulest not thou over the kingdom of men? Even if the president is warning you, he said, my father rules over him. He said, and all the kingdom of the hidden, even if the person is troubling the hidden, he said, and in thy hand is there no power and might, so that none can withstand thee. Ah. <laughs> verse 2, sorry, the next verse, verse 7. And thou not God that drove out the inhabitants of the land before thy people Israel, and gave it to the seed of, the, of Abraham, thy friend forever. You, they, let me tell you something. You want to provoke Abin? You will begin to count what God has done for you before. Many of you, you've forgotten. You will say, Lord, when I was in university and I thought I would not come out, I called upon your name from nowhere. You raised support for me. In the labor room, when they told me all the nonsense, the Spirit of God came down and I had my child that way. Go at that mountain before Zerubbabel. Learn to draw strength from your previous testimonies. What did I say? Learn to draw strength from your previous testimonies. Fasting and prayer triggers. So let's go back to the book of Isaiah. You can let me take off the chair. I'm sorry, book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 14. Praise God. I need to finish so that you can be provoked because you need to leave this service prayed. Then on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, the fire will fall. Praise God. It says, if thou altogether hold thy peace at this time, then shall enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy fathers shall be destroyed. For who knows if you have come to the kingdom for such a time like this. Verse 15, what did Esther say? Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. What's the answer? Continue. Continue. Let's read together. Want to go? All Shushan. All the Uh-huh. Did you see what he said? He said, before I go on to the king, I will fast and pray first. The problem is not the proposal. It's that prayer did not precede it. That's the problem. It's not, it's not your letter. He said, this queen said, listen, she was going to her husband though. You must know how people take things that are spiritual. She was going to her husband to make a request. He said, I don't want to go ordinary. There are other things I can go like that, but not this man. The rituals of our faith. You are teaching your children phonetics. You can't teach them to pray. Hi, hey, there are battles that English cannot solve. Oh. I'm telling you, I say, well, I've left them houses and jobs. Listen to me. Just one attack, all their inheritance can be wiped out. Leave them inheritance that money cannot buy. The value of prayer, the value of fasting, the value of waiting upon the Lord. So that when there are issues and there's no mom and dad, you have taught them the altar. You have taught them the place of power. Many adults are dysfunctional because their, their parents are not prayerful. And their parents did not teach them to pray. 
fasting and skatuleka mana so sate like it. I told you last week, I said prayer. Some people have physical disability. They don't have one eye. They have lost one leg. Prayer is a spiritual disability. When you see people that are not prayerful, feel bad for them. Because certain parts of their organs are missing. Listen, this is a queen. This is a queen because you keep saying that I am an MD. This is a queen. He said, God, how did she, why did she fast and pray? Because she was raised that way. If nobody raised you in prayer, raise up yourself. By fasting and praying now, you're saying, well, yeah, yeah, I fast and pray, I break at 9 a.m. Ah. He said, well, I fast and I'm praying, but can I drink conflicts? Ah. The thing about prayer is that everybody prays. I'm telling you, terrorists pray. But the thing about prayer is that don't be compelled to pray. Because the nature of prayer, pray so that you don't pray. You know what I mean? Pray so that what? You don't pray. Because you eventually pray. But pray now so that you are not compelled to pray. Because you will pray, sir. You will pray. But make it a prayer that is willing, not like, ha, ah, I'm finished. Pray so that you're not compelled to pray. Are you here? Oh, wow. So the Bible says they gathered to fast and to pray. They gathered to fast and to pray. What does fasting and prayer do? And this is, you know, do you have it? Yeah, bring it. What does fasting and prayer do? The first thing fasting and prayer does is to change you. Any prayer that does not touch you can touch no one. Glory to God. Can, can I have the clay? Can I have the hard clay and the soft clay? Just bring that. Don't worry. Just keep going, coming. I'm, I, you know, I, have, I want the hard and the soft clay. This needs to be plugged somewhere. And make me an offering. Jesus, bring the wine out of me. Where's the hard and soft clay? Where's the hard and soft? I want the hard clay. Where's the hard one? Uh huh. Luke. <laughs> Luke chapter 9, verse 29. This is what happens when you pray. And this, this is why we stay long in prayer. Luke chapter 9, verse 29. Luke chapter 9, verse 29. Are you there? Go ahead and put it on the screen quickly. The Bible says, and as he prayed, this is what the prayer did first. He said, the fashion of his countenance was altered. He said, as he prayed, he was changed. Prayer was changing him. The prayer was not changing things first. The prayer was changing you. One of the things prayer does is to purify your motive. Hey, the prayer was changing him. This is what you're praying, Father. I want to get married. And God says, uh -huh. get my share. I can show them. You know, say, oh, wow, Lord. Okay, I need to correct it. Father, I want to blow. Blow so that you can oppress them. He said, as he prayed, go back there, go back. The reason why is that prayer will work first in you before it works outside. He said, as he prayed, the fashion, is with the fashion, the style, the style of his countenance was altered. He, he was altered. Play, prayer is the place where we are altered. You need the place of prayer. You start limping like Jacob because some spiritual extractions has gone on. Some surgical operation has gone on. Prayer is the place where things are taken and things are put in. This is what prayer looks like. This is just clay. You know we are all clay. When you start praying, he will start to walk on you. He will start to melt you. 
you will start to see there are things he has to take from you. So he begins to walk on you. See how the shape is changing. The fashion of his countenance altered. The place of prayer is altering it. It's altering it. What is happening? It, when you do poetry, it's a process where you start to hit the clay. Because the clay has air in it. And with the air, you cannot use the clay to mold anything because you fall apart. So when you come into poetry, the first thing you have to do is to what? Is to beat the clay, beat the clay, remove the air. That's why you stay in prayer. Sometimes prayer is not about what we want. It's about there's too much in our life that needs to go out. The problem is that this clay is soft clay, wet clay. This one is hard. Before I can work on this one with a lot, he has to wet it. And that's why, look at this one now. Any effort to do it will start breaking. It starts falling apart. And that's why in prayer, sometimes you think prayer is not working. God, has, God is wetting you first. God is wetting. And you're wondering, how come Angela had this and me, I don't have this? But the nature of your heart is different. And how God is working is different. Some of you that think that prayer is not working, it's because you are at this stage. Before the prayer even works, before it even touches you, it has to make you go to what? This stage. Then from this stage, there's more production. See? See? See how hard the heart is? The heart is so hard. If you slam it on someone else, it can break. But God said, it's not what I can walk on. This is what the Bible said, break up the fallow ground. The heart in heart. He said, he wants you to be like this. Do like, like this. Twistable. Bendable. Breakable. Moldable. This is where you need to be. Bendable. Breakable. Moldable. But you are like this. Like rock. You say fast. You say, what should I fast? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no wonder. Look, look. See how it's out. Hard. Like rock. And God says we need to walk on you differently. Yes, My God. <laughs> and, 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 you, and you know what? This is the thing about prayer. This is what God is trying to make out of you. This is a clay pot. The clay pot comes from this clay. But before you can become this, this is where you need to go to. It has to beat you. But if you're like this, you have to go from here to this before you can become this. This is a process. In between this is the refiner's fire. It's the potter's wheel. I, I wish I had time to show you the potter's wheel, but we'll do that in the next service. We'll show you the potter's wheel. When we say fast, it's because the air in your clay needs to come out. There's, there's a lot of ego. You know, there's a way you, you are so self-centered, eh? Your wife tells you all the time, but you don't understand. So, God must bring you so that I can humble you. Praise God. I said, praise God. God needs to change someone. How do I get changed? He says, as he prayed, the countenance was Altered. What does fasting do? Hey, my God. Because you need intervention. Intervention starts inside your face before it moves outside. Watch out for the next service. What does fasting and prayer do to you? Uh -huh. Thank you, Jesus. Just know, whatever strengthens your spirit kills your flesh. That's fasting. Whatever strengthens your spirit kills your flesh. And whatever strengthens your flesh kills your spirit. What is fasting? Abstaining for food for divine focus. Don't be like Esau that ate away his future because of food. How many blessings have you lost because you can't fast? How many? Before you do that, let's pray. Oh, nah, nah, nah. I have ulcer. Oh, peptic ulcer. Hope you know peptic ulcer is the sister of what? What? Peptic ulcer is the sister of peptic po poverty and the causing of perennial stagnation. <laughs> Whatever God would do, would do that. I can't do anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be surprised that God will honor you too. He will honor you and say, I'm not a house boy. <laughs> Praise God. Why do we fast and pray? The first thing is we, we are praying for intervention. 
personal transformation. One of the things, let me just jump to this quickly and I'll close with this. This is how intervention happens. Can you help me hold this? We'll do this more in the next one because of time. Brother Thomas, come, 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 come. Brother Thomas, come. My brother, come too. Yeah, two of you come. Bring your book. Just bring your book like that. Two of you come. Yeah, two of you come, Tom. Come on, come, come on. Come. So, this is the minister. This guy is the minister. Stand ready with minister. This is the contractor looking for job in his ministry. He has submitted the documents. Only that the minister will not open it. This is what intervention does. As you begin to pray, what happens with intervention that angels begin to move? So, there are things he came to work to focus on. They are here. Come, come, come and focus on. These are the things you want to focus on. But all of a sudden, his child will come and play with him in the office. I say, Daddy, Daddy, what is this? What is this? And he's like, Oh, that's true. <laughs> that child did not just speak the Philo. It was angelic ministration that made the child pick the file. That's what intervention is. Where invisible forces will arrange things. I want to ask you, Peter said we fished all night. The fish he caught later, where did they come from? Intervention. Once the word was given, the global announcement from heaven came. The fishes are to gather because the angel has announced, go now. Praise God. Thank you. Let us pray. Praise God. Which of the pastors will lead us in prayer? Pastor, Lord, come quickly. Come and lead us in prayer. Get your, your, two of you to come. Are you ready? I, I, your man, no Do you need intervention? Are you ready to pray? Go ahead and pray, everybody. Go ahead and pray. You don't need prayer points, you can pray. You don't need prayer points, you can pray. We're going to close now. Judges chapter 5 verse 20. And I want you to speak a word over you. Judges chapter 5 verse 20. Let's read together. This was a battle. Women, I thought about this in the women's meeting. It says, and they fought from heaven. The stars in their courses fought against the Syria. That means the warfare was not just your proposal. There was a spiritual influence backing it up. That's what I want to pray for you. Anywhere you need intervention, anywhere in your health, in your marriage, in your relationship, on your job, on your spiritual walk, let them fight for heaven for you. Let the angels of my father, let them be dismissed right now. Amen. Let them fight for your promotion. Amen. Let them fight for your approval. Amen. Let them fight for your marriage. Amen. Let them fight for your job. Amen. Let them fight for your finances. Amen. Let them fight for your prayer requests. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh God, save Parabolos, where you have not been noticed from this hour, become noticed. Why you need to hear from people from this hour, hear from them. In the name of Jesus. When the doctor said it was impossible, after the order of Sarah, after the order of the woman of Israel, blood, receive a miracle. Ah, yeah.
Thank you, everyone, for answer prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, mighty God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have you received intervention? Please, whatever you do, don't miss Next Level Prayers this week. As we intensify on intervention, a total turnaround. If you are not fasting, start today. If you are watching online on one side, tell your husband to start, get your friends to start. Start today because they will fight from heaven. Hallelujah.